Hey guys, RPM here. Hope you're all doing well and having a really great day. In this video, I wanted to do all the hash rates that we can on the RTX A2000, which has been repadded, re-thermal pasted, and also modded. Uh, a PCB mod, uh, a shunt mod. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I've been told by JKNG Ventures that it's not a simple shunt mod. So <laughs> I saw a lot of comments on the video that I recently just did showcasing the 50 mega hash 49 mega hash modded a2000 and a lot of you guys are like oh it's just a simple shunt mod anyone can do this and apparently it's it's not something like that so i don't know what to say i'm not a modder i don't know how to solder i don't know how to do any of that myself so take that as you will if you guys think it's easy you why didn't anyone do this first or why didn't anyone showcase this to me before all this literally a couple days ago i had no idea that this was possible until jkng ventures contacted me about this and showed me the results and i was like wow this is literally amazing sorry he contacted me like a week and a half ago because that's when i shipped out my cards to him and he modded them and i got them back just just recently to, to do these videos. I gotta mention that right now. Some of you guys were actually inquiring. Some of you bought this this performance mod and thought you were buying an A2000 for $85. I don't know who in their right mind would sell an A2000 six gigabyte that's modded getting 49 mega ash for $85, but guys, that's not the case, okay? This is something you have to send in your A2000s to get done, to get the custom job. And I know a lot of people, I read the comments again, I'm gonna, I'm just, I just had to laugh. A lot of people think it's very easy to do. And I'm going to say 99% of the time, nobody knows how to solder. Like no one's ever, no one has ever done it. And if you don't have someone that knows how to do something like that, you may brick and just break your card. Do that at your own risk. All right. People that are saying in the comments that this is a very simple mod to do. It may very well may be a very simple mod. Yes. But this gentleman, JKNG Ventures, is the one who figured it out, okay? Just to, just to preface that, because I literally have never heard of anyone doing this to an A2000 up until the last, uh, last week and a half, just to let you guys know. So I had to get that off my chest, because that was really bothering me. People that were commenting like that, like, this is a very simple thing to do, and it's like, guys, if it was very simple, you would have done this earlier. Uh, anyways, anyways, guys, I wanted to do, just talk about the disclaimers before I do all the hash rates. I just wanted to talk about the disclaimers again. I did this in the first video, but I want to do it again in case somebody didn't watch the last video uh, that I did of this. So now there is, apparently this is a custom PCB level mod that unleashes the card's power more than the 75 watt stock specification for PCIe. So this will definitely void the NVIDIA warranty and it has potential for it to break. I don't know the long-term effect of this, okay, as modding these and utilizing it for the next year. I have absolutely no idea. I will personally be testing it out because I have 12 of these modded now and I will have another video putting 12 in a server case and on a riserless motherboard. So to talk about that, I would not, I would probably not use these modded GPUs on a standard PCIe slot on an ATX motherboard. Riserless motherboards with the six pin PCIe per PCIe slot may be okay, but I will be doing that test in another video, okay guys? So you don't have to. Uh, don't burn your regular ATX boards that has the slot on the motherboard because that, in most cases, you can only go up to 75 watt, which is the stock specification for PCIe on a motherboard. So you may burn your motherboard. You don't wanna do that. You do not wanna plug these cards into an ATX motherboard. I have to, I gotta say that multiple times. So I will test that in a riserless motherboard in another video, all right? Okay, next one is, uh, due to the design of A2000 hardware, mining each should need a power limit, but having one in place is good insurance, although drawing an unsafe amount of power is unlikely. So this basically means if you're using Hive OS or maybe Windows, I don't know if this is tested in Windows or not, but uh, you want to have, you, you may want to have a power limit set just in case it decides to just, I don't know, unleash itself and go to like to 150 watts or something. I, I don't, I don't think that's possible, but just in case, right? Just in case. And then the other disclaimer is you're going to be using these on risers. Okay. So you got to have really good risers. And the thing that I've been told is the 150 inductor choke and up is preferred. So gprisers.com has that. And so if you're using older risers, just check to see what the 
inductor choke whatever mosfet whatever this is just to make sure you have the proper power delivery capable on a riser like this all right and then the last one is do not power the riser with molex or sata i know you guys know this already but most risers come with a sata power cable in the bag so people think that works it does on normal lower range gpus mostly but absolutely will not work for the modded a2000 because the power right the pcie which we know is taking more than 75 watts as you guys can see at the top right here 89 87 watts on the modded a2000 getting 50 mega hash all right so there you guys go that's the very big disclaimer i will be testing this okay regarding the atx board rise of this board so to see if it's gonna burn up or not so uh just stay tuned for that video guys all right let's get on to it guys so let's do the hash rates for the a2000 i'll have everything all time stamped down below and in case you guys don't want to watch the rest of this video. So just real quick, the Ethereum hash rate we can achieve on the repadded one is 50.5 mega hash at about 82 watts in the software. But at the wall, at the PMD, it shows 89 watts, 87 watts. And then the stock A2000, which I've tried, been trying to play around with these overclocks. This A2000 that I have is extremely like silicon lottery i have tried so many different memory overclocks and this card it's just does not want to get higher than 41 mega hash i don't know what it is i've tried so many different numbers absolute core clock memory clock numbers anyways let's try ravencoin guys let me do ravencoin i'll see you guys in a sec okay we are mining ravencoin and yes there is a noticeable difference in terms of the hash rate that we can achieve you guys can see 18.63 mega hash versus 13.82 mega hash you can see the power consumption difference in the software the hash rate the hash per watt is also much better it looks like it's a little bit better on the modded a2000 it's finding more shares we did get one rejected but ultimately we are finding more shares here after about 17 minutes now looking at the overclocks this is something you guys probably want to see like red panda how come you're not using the same overclocks on each of the gpus well let me tell you guys i did test both to different overclocks and if i did the same overclock i did on my modded one on the stock one let's just say 100 2000 memory clock so i hit apply if i use the same overclocks i did on the modded one to my stock a2000 the stock a2000 hash rate starts going down and then i will do the other way here actually you know what we'll just do the other way right now if i didn't if I just did nothing, right? That's what I had on the stock A2000. On the modded A2000, you guys will see the hash rate start going down. You will see the hash rate go down on both, both of these cards now when I flip the overclocks <laughs> on each of these GPUs. There you go. See, 18.6. We're down to 18.28 now. We were at 13.8. Now we're at 13.4. And it's going to continue to go down just a bit more. So, yeah. With it being modded, it seems like, definitely seems like they're going to be using different overclock numbers to achieve that efficiency number or just higher hash rate per se. I found that to be interesting. See, now we're at 17.12 and then the hash rate also dropped on the stock one to 13.02, which is very strange, which is very strange. So if I put everything back, right, to 100 and then I put this back to stock, like any overclock I tried on the A2000, I could not get better than just having it just blank on the stock a2000 so the hash rate was at the highest peak of 13 almost 14 mega hash when i didn't change any of the overclocks on the stock one so yeah guys that is the ravencoin hash rate you guys can let me know what you think about that but yeah i mean the modded a2000 is better on ravencoin as we saw the hash per watt metric there at the power at the wall, it is about 84 watts on the modded one. And then on the stock one, which is regular 69, 70 watts regular, regularly. So if you do the math there, you know, actually at the wall versus the hash rate that we can achieve. I think the modded A2000 is a little bit better in terms of efficiency versus the, the stock A2000 on Ravencoin, that is. So, I mean, yeah, this is definitely better with it being modded and... I figured like maybe we would see like 100 or 90 watts on the A2000, the modded one that is. Seeing the hash rate jump go up to, you know, 18, 
18.6 mega hash 18.3 mega hash with the modded a2000 is is pretty awesome i mean if we were to compare that to other gpus out there i think the a2000 is is going to be the most efficient the modded a2000 is going to be the most efficient for uh, Ravencoin mining, but you guys can let me know. You guys can let me know. All right, guys, that's Ravencoin. Let's go ahead and try Flux. That's probably the most next prominent coin after mining Ethereum. So uh, be right back. Okay, we are mining Flux. We're getting 28 souls on the modded one and 24.8 on the stock A2000. You can see the uh, efficiency here 0.41 souls per watt on the modded one. 0.36 souls on the stock a2000 and yeah i mean look at that that is actually a pretty big difference but what's really surprising is now the power consumption at the wall it's been you know fl flux does fluctuate pun intended a lot you can see there the power the pmd meters they're going all over the place but i'm gonna say that like I'm going to say the modded A2000 is taking a little bit more for sure. But yeah, I think, that, yeah, that makes the A2000 modded one really, really good on mining flux. Even like when it's close to 30 mega hash or sorry, 30 souls, that's, that's pretty good. I'm going to say this thing takes about 73 watts at the wall, 70, 80, maybe 80 watts. Sometimes it's fluctuating a lot. There you guys go. The same overclocks, same everything. All right, guys. Yeah, I mean, that's a given. If we saw Ethereum better and also Ravencoin better, then Flux is going to be better on this card as well. All right, let's go ahead and try another coin. Okay, we are mining Ergo, and we're getting on the stock A2000, 100 mega hash, almost 101. And then on the modded A2000, we're getting 105 mega hash. But you can see the hash per watt, it looks like the stock one is better. In terms of mining ergo now i don't know i'm using these overclocks right here i've been getting some varying results a little bit when i changed the core i tried absolute core clock but did not get over 100 mega hash on the modded a2000 i tried absolute core clock on the stock a2000 but was not able to get over 100 as well so it seems like doing the regular core numbers under just not absolute core clock was able to yield me better results I tried doing 175, but then it dropped under 100 mega hash. So 150 core seemed to do better there. 350 memory, 3000 memory on the uh, modded A2000. So yeah, I mean, I think, I feel like the uh, modded A2000 is, it seems like it's less efficient than the stock A2000, but you guys can let me know about that. All right, I think I'm just going to do one more coin and then we're going to call it. So I'll be right back. Okay, we are mining Conflux, and we are noticing definitely a big difference here. We're getting 33 mega hash on the modded A2000, and then 24 on the stock A2000. You can see the efficiency. There we go. It's moving so fast. The efficiency here is 428.3 versus 358.7. And then if we look at the wall for the power consumption, it's... Yeah, it's over... The modded one is 80, 80 watts or so, uh, 86, 85 watts. And then the stock one is obviously 70 watts. But yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big hash rate jump on the modded one here for mining uh, CFX, Conflux. Okay, so let's just end off, guys. So we did a couple hash rates, more so the, the coins that could have potential after you know ethereum moves to proof of stake right as long as there's going to be no more proof of work so now does it make sense to do this mod on this card well i'm gonna say right now i don't know the fact that ethereum is moving away is going to you know if you're mining ethereum on these cards currently you're gonna be losing out on maybe probably maybe a week a week and a half to two weeks at most in terms of getting your cards back after they're being modded so there's that point of it of just you're not mining for it for a while if you're going to send these off to jk and g ventures or whoever else but you know another thing is is that with these cards we noticed that we are getting a lot more hash rate on other coins minus ergo but we noticed a hash rate bump now if it's worth it to you that you are getting you are going to get 
uh, noticeable difference on Ravencoin, noticeable difference on Conflux. It seems like more so on the memory intensive coins. Is that correct? Or core intensive coins? It seems like we're getting more hash rate. I mean, generally, generally, we're getting more hash rate on all these coins that I just showed you guys. So I think that's pretty cool. And if it's going to be worth it for you or not after Ethereum, then that's that begs the question uh, if it's worth it to you or not to do this on your A2000s. And then it also begs the question, the long term, I guess, long term in terms of these cards being OK after mining for this long, if they'll still be OK with the mod with the solar job that is being done on these cards. So that's another thing we're not quite sure. That is definitely a risk that uh, some people may take here. And uh, JKNG Ventures actually just added a leave the stock pads in there or replace the thermal pads with the 20 megawatt GPU riser pads. Uh, oh no, it says here with Pro Limitech PK3 while they were in there performing the mod. So that adds on an extra 50 bucks to do the, to do the thermal pads as well if you don't want to do that yourself. So $135 to do this whole mod plus shipping, I'm assuming. That's a, that's a, that's a, you know, that's a pretty hefty bill to add on to getting, obviously you're going to get lower memory temperatures. That helps a lot for sure. I think that helps a lot, but it's going to use a little bit more power, but you are gaining a lot more hash rate in a sense uh, for what you are going to be paying for, for this mod. Or if you want to do it yourself, if you know how to do this yourself, then go for it, right? That <laughs> if you know how to do this, then go for it. You, you, you don't have to just say, uh, it's a, it's a five cent mod. It's a 20 cent mod. And, uh, well, most people don't have a soldering machine or whatever. I don't know how much that cost. Think about it, right? If, if you think you can do it yourself, then obviously do it. But you have to give props to JKNG Ventures for having this kind of thing, uh, this service for A2000s to basically unlocking the performance on these cards, which I think is pretty cool. All right, my friends, thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Let me know your thoughts. Have a good one and peace out.